to be here in New Orleans. I love this town. Um, ever since I was a little kid, this has always been my favorite place to vacation. My uh, parents would put me on the train in Yazoo City and I'd ride it down to New Orleans and my aunt and uncle would pick me up at the station and um, I have always adored this town and I'm really pleased to be involved with uh, Louisiana seafood. We've got, um, we're going to do some broiled oysters today and where's your favorite oyster spot? Uh, to get your oysters from. You know, I love Louisiana oysters, but I'm a huge fan of Apalachicola oysters as well. I'm a, I'm a big Appalachia fan also. Um, we've got some oysters that have been shucked and on the half shell here. Yum. Look at those. Beautiful. And I've got these on a bed of rock salt for two reasons. Um, first, it's going to be a great heat conductor, so when these go under the broiler, it's really going to be able to heat them up from the underside, and also it's going to keep them from wiggling around too much uh, when you're serving them. And also, it's a really beautiful presentation. So when you're doing these for a dinner party or a buffet, you can um, line your, your plate with the rock salt and transfer them to there, and it keeps them warm during service also. So in this little saucepan here, I'm going to add our oyster liquor, which is just all the reserved juice from chucking our oysters. We've got some fresh lemon juice, and I know none of y'all are the reconstituted lemon juice out of a bottle people. No, <laughs> heavens, heavens, certainly not. Um, really, you want to use a nice fresh lemon juice to really give you that citrus kick that's going to um, go great with our oysters. We've got a little bit of butter because everything's better with, with butter. butter. Good job. Um, and I always like to use unsalted butter because salt is added to butter for two reasons, as a flavor enhancer and as a preservative. So unsalted butter is going to be made with a slightly higher quality cream and it hadn't been hanging out in a warehouse or in a grocery store storage for um, however long. Um, we've also got a little bit of tarragon vinegar and I really like tarragon with oysters. It um, has that little licorice flavor that's kind of reminiscent of Pernod or anisette that would be used in oysters Rockefeller. And um, we've got a little bit of dried mustard. I'm a big fan of Coleman's dried mustard in the yellow tin. Um, when you smell mustard, it doesn't really smell like much, but once it's, it um, comes in contact with the liquid, then it's going to release those enzymes that give you a little bit of heat and also um, that little pungency. Um, I've got some celery seed here and a little bit of cracked black pepper. I'm going to let this uh, simmer just enough to melt your butter. And on our oysters here, we're going to um, put a little slice of bacon on the top of each one of these. Then we're going to pop them in the broiler. Um, you could also use peppered bacon. That's really nice if you're a big fan of black pepper. Is this coming along? Well, it smells really good. The seafood we're getting out of the Gulf of Mexico is absolutely fantastic. So um, race out there when you all get done today. Pick up your own batch of great local seafood, and I promise you, when you all get home, uh, you all are going to have a great time with it. So this is a simple recipe, and it's, it's springtime. It's a gorgeous day outside. It's the weekend. And I think one of the reasons people come to the home and garden shows, they want to start to plan their spring, right? They want to start to get into the groove for what's happening with summer. And so we decided to do an easy recipe that you all can definitely rip off. You can definitely do it at home. And, uh, and it's easy, and you don't have to spend all day in the kitchen. OK? You all ready? Yeah? Um, so for this recipe, this is called uh, grilled shrimp pinchos, and I uh, learned this recipe from some of the folks down in Puerto Rico where I visited last summer. And it's basically it's it's um, it's food on a stick, and everybody loves that, yeah. So what we have here is um, fresh shrimp, and y'all can see that in the mirror, right? Yeah. So uh, fresh limes. Let's go right into it. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of fresh citrus as well. If y'all have that funky stuff in the little um, flake pla uh, fake plastic jar in the fridge, just, just toss it. And I know they're not the already cut up garlic in a jar people either, are you? <laughs> Absolutely no. not. No. So, so if, with fresh citrus, what you really want to try to do to maximize the juice, just put it on your countertop, just put some weight on it, and start busting up the membranes on the inside. And it's going to give you probably about a third more fresh juice. And it makes your hands smell really good as well. Okay? So just cut these right in half. Squeeze more fresh lime juice right across the top. And that's a wrap. 
So in these, we've got some uh, Caribbean spice. This is, um, think of like uh, Jamaican jerk seasoning, right? Curry, fresh, a lot of fresh coriander, some turmeric, some Creole seasoning, which is um, cayenne pepper, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder. And don't be bashful, okay? This is a Creole dish, last Caribbean, and people are certainly not bashful about uh, flavor down there. Lime zest, lime juice, just a bit of oil. Red chili flakes. Y'all like spicy food, huh? Okay. How spicy do you like it? Okay. Might, might as well, okay? We got some fresh garlic going. And this is an easy recipe. A little bit more fresh lime juice. Okay. And this is a batch that's been made already. You can make this up to like a day ahead. You can throw it in the back of your refrigerator before your party comes. You can use this as a salad dressing, a vinaigrette, something right on top of a grilled steak, or you can use it to dress fresh seafood like we're doing today. So we've got our fresh shrimp, and all you really want to do with these is the larger the shrimp, the more sand it may have in the back here, okay? So we're not trying to butterfly these shrimp. All we really want to do is open it up like so, okay? And there's a little sand line, a vein in here. So we'll take these in a water, just rinse them nice and clean. And there's a couple different bamboo skewers that you can use. You can find these in any local grocery store. Um, it's pretty, pretty standard. You can get these fancier ones at like uh, Pier 1 Imports, right, or, or World Market. Asian markets. Asian markets are great. Um, and they're great for hors d'oeuvres or shrimp dish. And they come in a couple different sizes too. There's a small one that makes a nice little hors d'oeuvre thing. Today we're going to use the medium sized one. And what we want to do. You look like the other Martha. It looks like the other Martha. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to take these and thread them right onto our bamboo skewer. And you can soak these a day ahead in water or oil. And oil is going to help the shrimp to come off once it's actually grilled. Otherwise, they kind of stick onto the wood and it makes it a little bit, um, a little, little rougher. Right? So that comes right out the tail. And then eventually, we're going to ram these right into our fresh pineapples and light some stuff on fire. So. so I've got all these with a little blanket of bacon. I like the sound of that, a blanket of bacon. I like that. Um, and I'm going to put these in our preheated broiler for about eight minutes or until your bacon's um, nice and crispy. So I'll pop those in the oven. I'm going to start on our, my second dish, which is a West Indies salad. And I'm going to chop up some onion nice and fine. So I've got some fresh pineapples here. And you can buy these in a local grocery store. Just take off all of the outer layer and just cut the bottoms at a bit of an angle. And it kind of makes a nice garnish. If they can sit up right, I think so. You look like a party rock star in the kitchen. The, 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 the hair it's on all the... all uh, about presentation. It, that's right. That's and it. I love dishes that make people think that you went to a lot of trouble for and it looks like you've worked really hard in the kitchen. And this is one of those, you know, it makes a great impact. But little do they know that just took, you know, 10 minutes to make. Yeah, absolutely right. I'm going to begin layering our crab salad. So um, this is a staple at every bridesmaid's luncheon in the Mississippi Delta. And generally when I make it for a party, I make two batches because I'm going to stand around the kitchen with a sleeve of saltine crackers and eat pretty much a whole batch by myself. So that way I won't have separation anxiety when I have to give the rest of it away um, at the shower. Um, in this little bowl, I'm going to combine, um, I've got uh, some vegetable oil, and I like to use canola oil or soybean oil um, that has a really neutral flavor. Um, I've got some cider vinegar here, and you could use white wine vinegar or champagne vinegar, whatever is your favorite. I'd steer clear of balsamic because it's going to turn your shrimp a very unpleasant uh, grayish color and um, you know presentations half the battle. We've got some cayenne and uh, add more or less to your liking but I know these two want more so we'll go ahead and dump that in there. We've got a little bit of salt and I like to use uh, sea salt or kosher salt um, it tastes less overtly salty than iodized salt is, and I like the texture of the little crystals in it. Um, again, we've got some uh, ground black pepper, and I like to use pretty finely ground in this recipe because the crab is so light and flavorful, you don't want to uh, get a pebble 
of pepper. You know, sometimes uh, you'll go to a restaurant and it's like eating gravel. The, the, yeah. the people have gone so crazy with, um, with the black pepper. So I'm gonna give this a little whisk. And in our bowl here, I'm going to add a little bit of onion and some of our crab meat. And you really want to be careful to um, check through your crab meat and make sure you don't have any little translucent cartilage in there because the trip to the emergency room puts a damper on a dinner party every single time. So I'm going to check on my oysters while yeah, you're doing that. So today we're using shrimp, but y'all can use um, uh, any other great kind of um, local seafood as well. If y'all want to do something that is a little bit more meaty, like uh, fresh yellowfin tuna right out of the Gulf of Mexico, that with this marinade, a little bit of blackening spice, absolutely fantastic. Y'all have got to go and check it out. So these shrimp, now that they're on the, this little grill pan here, they're going to go pretty quick. So if you're going to pay good money for it's probably some of the best that the Gulf of Mexico has to offer. Don't overcook them. At the restaurant, um, we always try to cook ours to about medium well. That way, when you go to put the sauce on them, put a little garnish on the top, by the time they hit the dining room, they're perfectly cooked, they're moist, they're flavorful, and people routinely walk back to the kitchen and say, oh my God, Tori, that's the best shrimp I've ever had. Well, you know what? Just don't, don't overcook them. Um, our last ingredient that we're gonna add into our dressing for the salad is some uh, cold water. And that's going to help so the vinegar just isn't so overpowering. And this is going to go in the refrigerator, covered, and we're going to let that marinate overnight. And so again, it's a great one for a party, bridesmaid shower, that sort of thing, because you're not scurrying around the kitchen at the last minute, um, getting everything together. You know, people are either on Team Cilantro or not on Team Cilantro. I'm yeah. on Team Cilantro. Yeah, so a lot of people say just it tastes real, real soapy when you eat it. Well, you know, a big mouthful of salt doesn't taste great when you eat it either. But the cool thing about cilantro is one of those herbs that really goes great in combination with a lot of other great Caribbean flavors. So uh, today we've got a bunch of dark rum, we've got some coconut rum, fresh mango, fresh pineapple. Add a little cilantro into that and you say to yourself, wow, it just tastes a bit better. Um, so that's what we definitely use it for in our kitchen. Through the magic of television, uh -huh. 24 hours have elapsed and we have our crab salad here. So I've got our salad all made up right here and I'm going to go and snatch those oysters right out of the oven. In the meantime, we're going to uh, light up our first batch. Y'all ready? This is uh, Malibu coconut rum. And this is some um, Myers dark rum as well. There you go. The, the shrimp are nice and golden brown, right? And all you really want to do here is just start putting them in your pineapple. And you can do this as a little hors d'oeuvre for your party. So when your guests are walking in, have these ready, pull them right off the grill. Total and, rock star action. And uh, gets the party started pretty quickly.